The Subaru National Road Series moves from the Great South Coast to northeastern Victoria's Sam Miranda Tour of the King Valley. Series leader Patrick Bevan will be looking to consolidate his lead in the overall standings and will be brimming with confidence after the recent announcement that he is signed to race with Cannondale Garmin in the World Tour from 2016. Bevan holds a 21-point lead to African Wildlife Safari's Michael Schweitzer and 24 points ahead of his Avanti teammate Pat Shaw. The scene is set for exciting racing and the four dirt sectors in Stage 3 are sure to ignite the 143-man peloton. The Dal's Otto Winery is a perfect setting for the Stage 1 time trial. This region, known as Little Italy, is a wine lover's haven, and Dal's Otto is rated as one of the finest. Visitors are engaged with wine tastings, plenty of family anecdotes, and even a game of bocce, with a glass of Prosecco in hand. The opening stage of the San Miranda Tour of the King Valley is a nine kilometre time trial, starting and finishing here in the town of Whitfield. Pretty straightforward, it's straight out the main road, U-turn straight back. So it's the big powerful time trialers that will certainly excel on a stage like this. Look out for the two big Kiwis in Patrick Bevan and Joe Cooper to go well. You know it's nice to have the time trial first up to create some separation uh, so we don't end up having to box on every single stage, every single minute of every stage. It's nice to have that but it's not going to create huge gaps so it's still going to be a tough tour. Nice straightforward time trial, a little bit of rolling roads, but uh, pretty much predominantly flat out and back. It's a really big field for the men, 138 riders with 30 second intervals as they go out on the time trial course. And one of the early riders that was expected to do pretty well was Alex Morgan from the Victorian Institute of Sport John West team. He's only recently come back from a stint of racing in Belgium and he is a time trial expert, so we expected him to go strong. Perhaps the riders wouldn't appreciate just how spectacular the King Valley is and the weather conditions for a bike race was absolutely perfect. Well, in the week of his 21st birthday, Alex Morgan was really powering back towards the finish line. As he hit the tape, it was 12 minutes exactly, which really did set the best time for everyone else to chase. Perhaps the pre-race favourite for the time trial is the former New Zealand time trial champion, Joe Cooper. He rides for the Avanti Racing Team and he absolutely loves time trialling. It really is his bread and butter. Today, you know, we had the plan of, you know, me and Patty, you know, obviously there's a bit of a TT rivalry there and, uh, yeah, we just pretty much both had the same same goal when we set out and that was just to go as fast as possible. And he was expected to go very well and he certainly did. As he crossed the line, he went to the new best time of 11 minutes and 19 seconds, 41 seconds ahead of Alex Morgan. Sean Lake from African Wildlife Safari has been a real surprise packet in time trialling in particular in the Subaru National Road Series and he crossed the line, he was third best at that point, 29 seconds behind Joe Cooper at a time of 11.48. Starting not too far behind Sean Lake was the other big time trial stage favourite and the overall Subaru National Road Series current race leader in Patrick Bevan from the Avanti Racing Team and he was really quickly into a fast rhythm. The last rider to start was the German import for Charter Mason Racing, Raphael Freinstein. He's not a time trial specialist, but he's a really handy rider and he's in great form. Back out on the course, the other big stage favourite in Patrick Bevan from Avanti Racing was really riding a solid tempo and he's hit the tape at 11.25, it was only six seconds behind Cooper in second place. The only rider now left out on course was the last starter, Raphael Freinstein, not a time trial expert, but he was trying to do his best and as he came back down towards the finish line, seventh best it was for Freinstein, 41 seconds behind Joe Cooper with a time of 12 minutes flat. Avanti Racing's New Zealand dynamic duo of Joe Cooper and Patrick Bevan go 1-2 on the stage and the young South Australian Sports Institute rider Callum Scottson came away with third. Heading into the next stage, which is the 39 kilometre criterium in the centre of Wangaratta, Joe Cooper has a six second lead over his teammate Patrick Bevan and 15 seconds further back to Callum Scottson.
Stage 2 comes to the heart of Wangaratta in northeast Victoria and situated right on the course is Café Duralia, the quirky former railway cafe built in 1947 to surface the growing demand for rail passengers in post-war. It has been given a new life and will be a great vantage point to have a bite and watch the race. Stage two is a 39 kilometer criterion right here in the heart of Wangaratta. It's 30 laps, but interestingly, there are 10 time bonus sprints on offer. And the overall situation, Joe Cooper has a six second lead over his teammate, Patrick Bevan, and Callum Scottson, the young gun from South Australian Sports Institute, is at 15 seconds. But with all these time bonuses on offer, I wouldn't be surprised to see the criterion skills of Patrick Bevan take him into the overall race lead by the end of the stage. It's gonna be interesting every third lap the sprint and uh, really fast and the last corner is really tight so in the finish you have to be up there at least second wheel to win the stage. As always in these fast criteriums, it was just right on from the get-go and Charter Mason were very active attacking on the first lap. By the time they got to the first intermediate time bonus sprint, Ben Hill from Charter Mason picked up the five seconds on offer. There were several great spots to view the action all the way around the short street circuit, including the derailleur cafe. As the race wore on and those intermediate time bonus sprints kept coming, Patrick Bevan had raced his way into the overall lead by 11 seconds after picking up so many of the bonus sprints. I actually ended up taking quite a bit of time. I was quite surprised. I thought uh, everyone would be quite keen and there'd be groups away all the time, but to take uh, it took about 16 seconds in the in the intermediate. So. Uh, it was uh, just tidy, just keeping it, it over. Chatter Mason were also active in the intermediate sprints and Raphael Freinstein was one of the notable riders picking up time bonuses. The pace was so fast, it was really difficult for any attacks to get off the front, especially with Avanti Racing really controlling proceedings. But then a small group did get off the front and Avanti had a rider in Matthew Clark out there, so they didn't have the chance. Yeah, fairly you told you knew African wasn't uh, in the break and they're here with a sprinter and they set up quite a good train in the end, so you knew, yeah. But we also had Maddie up there, local boy, so it would have been nice to see him uh, sail away for the win, but it uh, doesn't always happen that way. As the gap started to open up, that breakaway group mopped up the last couple of intermediate sprints and a young rider that was really strong was Sean O'Callaghan, who then went away on his own from the break. O'Callaghan stayed away for several laps because they were getting closer to the bell. The chase was on back in the main field and the breakaway group was reeled back in. On the last lap, the scene was set for a mass sprint to the finish. As they came into the final corner, which was really tight and tricky, surprisingly, all of the riders made it round safely. And Patrick Bevan showed the class that has seen him get signed into the world tour with Cannondale Garmin to win the stage ahead of Raphael Freinstein and Michael Schweitzer. Had to really fight for that last corner, but uh, I didn't think being second would be enough, but I kind of got a good run out of the corner um, and uh, just got under him in the end. Uh, we'd done plenty of intermediate, so we knew how it was, but uh, the finish is always a bit different. He's getting used to the top step, but Patrick Bevan from Avanti Racing again on top in first with Raphael Freinstein from Charter Mason second and Michael Schweitzer from African Wildlife Safaris third. In the overall classification, Patrick Bevan from Avanti Racing now holds a 23 second lead over his teammate Joe Cooper and 34 seconds to Callum Scottson as they head into stage three and the infamous dirt roads known as Strada Nero. Good. <laughs> One of the most likeable riders in the Aussie peloton is big Paul van der Ploeg. The Australian cyclocross champion is juggling his love of the dirt with racing the NRS and is an integral part of his Charter Mason team. 
We came into the season trying to focus on the team's classification because we know we've got a really broad, strong team in all different areas and different strengths on different tours. So, yeah, it's been an amazing season for Charter Mason, getting so many stage wins and being in so many different jerseys throughout the NRS. And, um, yeah, everyone's really happy with how Charter Mason's been riding this year. He's not charging. <laughs> He's great to have on tour. He's one of the jokers on the team and really lifts, lifts, lifts the spirit to the guys so he's always he's always fun and come on Paul come on now I can't talk to you without mentioning that incident from the Australian Cyclocross Championship you went away as the winner but Chris Jongavard and you showed a little bit of love to each other what was going on that day yeah a bit of a race incident uh, it kind of went global and uh, everyone's got their opinions but yeah I mean at the end of the day it was awesome to come away with the win and uh, yeah, I think we're still uh, on good terms after it, but uh, yeah, it's all racing. We'll just be going out for a for a warm up like yesterday, and he's off in the dirt. And when we we did like talking about the dirt sections coming up in the tour, he's just like you can just see him getting excited, and he's off bunny hopping this and running around doing that. So he's hard to keep on task sometimes, but he's just a lot of fun to be around. All right, so what are you going to choose? Cyclocross, mountain bike or road? What are you going to do in the future? You have to pick one. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's so many options. I just enjoy riding my bike, so as long as I'm out there racing and having fun, that's the main thing. And I mean, going over and racing mountain bike worlds is exciting, but I'm also super excited to race my first Cyclocross World Cup. So, I mean, I find it hard to focus on one thing, but I also enjoy everything. So, I don't know, it's, it's uh, just about finding the balance, I guess. Oh. <laughs> Sam Miranda is a third generation of a prominent winemaking family who moved from Italy to Australia in the 1930s. King Valley has a reputation as an exceptional region for producing wines of high quality and it is home to passionate winemakers with fresh ideas. Sam Miranda is also renowned for their Italian varieties, especially the Prosecco. Stage three of the Sam Randa Tour of the King Valley and it's a 111 kilometer road stage right through the King Valley itself. And this is the one everyone's been talking about. It's the Strada Nero, the black dirt road sections that feature on the two King of the Mountain climbs on the day. And there's also some dirt road sections before the finish, which are really gonna play havoc with the bunch. But after the two short stages that we've seen so far, Avanti Racing have really put themselves in a very strong position with Patrick Bevan and Joe Cooper leading the way. Yeah, it's flat, but I think it's also quite rough with potholes and loose soil and yeah, anything can happen as people see in the Paru Bay and uh, those classic races, the dirt just blasts the peloton apart. It was a nervous rollout for the riders from the San Miranda winery. As they approached the first intermediate sprint, it was Patrick Bevan, the overall race leader, that took out the points. Chatter Mason were also prominent with Raf Freinstein and Ben Hill picking up second and third. The first dirt road section, it was clear that the peloton had decided to take it a little bit easier with so much other dirt to come, and they pretty much cruised across that first sector. So it was very controlled, everyone just kind of felt their way through it and looked after each other, and after that was when the race really started getting going again with the brakes going and the first real brake going up the road. As they came off the dirt, then the race really did start, and there was a group of three that went off the front, which included Jason Lee and Ryan Christensen, two really good, strong young riders. When the breakaway group came onto the Strada Nero, or the, the Black Roads on the final KOM, the gap had gone out to 2 minutes and 30 seconds, but the peloton was really starting to chase hard behind. The bunches were leading out very hard into the bottom of the second KOM, that was the dirt climb. That was very tough, everyone wanting to be at the front, everyone sprinting straight into the bottom of it and started out very, very hard. It was a very tough climb the whole way up with people blowing everywhere, people in shambles, gaps opening. And On the fast descent from the final KOM down to the town of Whitfield, 15 riders caught up with the three leaders, so 18 riders duked it out for the intermediate sprint at Del Zotto Wines. And Patrick Bevan, the race leader, once again came away with the five bonus seconds. That's when all the teams started lining it up, another break went away. We had one of our riders in it. We were just content with sitting on Avanti and letting them ride their way into it. A bit of the team plan was to light it up as much as we could. And when we got on there, that's what we did. We had Big Paulie on the front. He was in his domain, just smashing it out on the dirt, having a lot of fun. 
and really just blew the race to pieces. Hey, got a rear flat tire. Bunch was so strung out here. But uh, managed to get back on the downhill. Woo! It was full on gravel and stones on it. So that was really hard to ride on because sometimes it was deep and with the corners in it, it was hard to get. The eight-man group out in front started to break up and they were fighting hard to try and stay away from the main field. But it, again, it was Charter Mason back on the front of the main field just driving it hard. The leaders were caught before the end of the second and final dirt section. Had Bevan punctured, but he got a quick wheel change and he just kept on chasing. He digged really deep and just closed it. So it myself, Ben and Rath and Lucas Hamilton off the front. We thought we might be able to get it, but Paddy Bevan was just too strong on the front, just slowly grinding us back. But by the time they got to the 10 kilometre to go point, it was all back together for an elite group of 30 riders. In the final kilometres, there were a flurry of attacks, but as they approached 500 metres to go, Michael Schweitzer from African Wildlife Safaris decided to go early. Had a good wheel and went early through that first corners, held on and yeah, it was a great win then for me, I'm happy with it. Yeah, after I think what a 12th podium or whatever right this year, it's, I'm really delighted to get the victory finally. Yeah, yeah and I'm really happy with that. <laughs> after so many podiums, without the top step position, Michael Schweitzer from African Wildlife Safaris finally gets a Subaru National Road Series stage victory. Ahead of Patrick Bevan from Avanti Racing, and third was Ben Hill from Charter Mason. In the overall standings, Patrick Bevan now has a 48 second lead over Callum Scottson from Sassy and 49 seconds from Raphael Freinstein from Charter Mason. But the big loser on the day was Patrick Bevan's teammate Joe Cooper losing 2 minutes and 19 seconds. Stage four of the Sam Miranda Tour of the King Valley runs through the gourmet region in Victoria's famed King Valley. The Millua Cheese Company was established in the historic Millua Butter Factory in 1988 by owners David and Anne Brown. They set out to make delicious Australian farmhouse cheese inspired by European methods. All the cheeses are still lovingly handmade by head cheesemaker Stephen Russell and his team. All cheeses are preservative free and made with non-animal Renathair on site. Well here we are for the final stage of the Sam Miranda Tour of the King Valley. It's over 88 kilometres. There are two intermediate sprints and two King of the Mountain climbs. The last of those climbs coming 18 kilometres from the finish. So it may be somewhat of a launching pad for anyone trying to go for the stage victory. The overall situation sees Patrick Bevan with a commanding 38 second lead over Callum Scottson and 49 seconds back to Raphael Freinstein. So at the moment, Bevan and his Avanti team are in a very strong position, but don't expect the other teams to just lay down and let him have it. Bevan's pretty clear at the moment, I think. Uh, not too worried about him, I think he's got it sewn up. And then it's one second to Freinstein behind me and then uh, 19 seconds to Ben Hill. For the young rider, I think it's 30, 40 seconds to Dan Fitter. So it'll be really charter, the ones we've got to watch today. As expected, it was a fast start to the stage, as they always are in the Super National Road Series, and the attacks were coming thick and fast. Lots of riders were looking to go on the attack, but the Avanti racing team just came to the front of the peloton and shut everything down. As they headed towards the first of the intermediate sprints, 14 kilometres into the race, it was Toby Orchard from AMR Renault that took up the points, ahead of Raph Freinstein from Charter Mason, and then Paddy Bevan from Avanti was third. Immediately after that first intermediate sprint, the peloton was motoring down the road, averaging around 50 kilometres per hour, when a touch of wheels saw all hell broke loose and a mass pile-up, including two motorbikes. Just a small touch of wheels, as they say, and it, um, yeah, it came down just in front of me, and I managed to sneak past on the left, but those noises of carbon cracking and smashing, it's pretty, pretty daunting and a uh, bit of a scary noise. It was a frantic scene with riders piling on top of each other, 
And amongst the carnage, we saw Jackson Carmen from Mobius Future Racing seriously hurt. Also, Michael Troy from GPS Stultz and Todd Bushell from Victoria were two more riders that seemed worse for wear. Sadly, it was on a big straight piece of road, so obviously there's some inattention there that, that's caused an accident, which uh, yeah, you don't want to see. It's just chaos when you see it, the field of that size split into the pieces it was. So I uh, really do hope all those guys are OK and uh, are back racing soon. And it wasn't just bodies that were damaged. Fraser Goff was one of the riders who had a bike snapped in half. The race was immediately neutralised and as the mopping up the riders continued, the race organisation had to make a decision. We don't have to make the stage null and void, um, so the race is off. Uh, placings will stand on yesterday, um, just due to we don't have the medical services available, we'll still be delayed for a long period of time. Uh, we know there's a lot of riders that have got flights and, and travel arrangements that they have to meet. Uh, so we think it's in the best interest for everyone that uh, the race finishes as it was yesterday's standings. With so much medical being uh, used up here, we can't continue the race without having medical support for them. Yeah, look, it's pretty shattering to um, have such a great weekend racing end in a, a situation such as it has. Uh, but obviously we've got to look after the riders' safety. Um, we can't run a race without medical on the course and obviously the time delays will just exacerbate with the police and, and the road closures so we obviously need to look after um, everyone's interest. As the peloton made their way back to the San Miranda winery it was a sombre Pat Bevan that claimed the overall victory. Not a great way to, to finish the last stage with a, with a crash of that size. Um, at the end of the day uh, it's about rider safety if they can't carry on the race safely well that's the end of the race so not the way you want to win but uh, at the end of the day that, that's the result and uh, that, that's the end of it. Claiming the final sprint championship was Patrick Bevan on the 48 points. After a solid climbing performance it was Ryan Christensen from Oliver's Real Racing taking out the mountains competition. The best young rider was Callum Scotson taking out the under 21 competition. In the team's classification it was the all-conquering Avanti racing team on top just ahead of Charter Mason coming away with the overall victory of the Sam Miranda Tour of the King Valley was Patrick Bevan from Avanti Racing, ahead of young gun Callum Scotson from the South Australian Sports Institute and Charter Mason's Raphael Freinstein. Bevan extends his overall lead in the Subaru National Road Series, ahead of Michael Schweitzer from African Wildlife Safaris and Raphael Freinstein from Charter Mason. Next up in the Subaru National Road Series, the men head to the National Capital Tour in Canberra and the women head to the Amy Gillett Otway Challenge in Victoria.